from the News Channel 5 Network, this is Morning Line with Nick Barris. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us on Morning Line. Nick Barris here with you on a Tuesday. I hope you will join in the conversation this morning because we're going to talk about something very important to the city of Nashville. That is the fact, one, that we are about to have a new mayor. Of course, we have one newly elected and we'll be taking uh, the seat on the 28th. And uh, a lot of what was campaigned upon has to do with the budget here in the city of Nashville, the budget hole, the money, how we're going to get out of this mess and why we're in this mess in the first place. And so the mayor, of course, doesn't do it all alone. He'll be working with the council. And this morning, we're glad to have with us, all right, two at-large members. Oh, yeah, they're powerful front row members of the council. <laughs> I didn't mean to laugh. Sorry about that. Bob Mendez, good morning good to morning. you. Good morning. Good to see yeah, you again. The newbie here. Yeah, the so, newbie. Well, not really. Yeah. Steve Glover. Good morning to you both, gentlemen. Thank good you morning. for coming Thank on. You. I really do appreciate you coming on. I, I guess... Um, you know, time of transition. Kind of, would you say it's kind of exciting? In fact, the sense that there's going to be some change in transition, which I, do you think that's a good thing? I don't think people mind change. I mean, people don't like surprises. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, we had 70% of the electorate vote for the candidate who uh, said there will be change. So, yeah, there, there's going to be change coming. Um, I think we're all interested to see where it's going to be. Um, I think people don't like surprises, though. All right. Would you agree with that? From my standpoint, yes, the, speak, uh, the people spoke. And mm -hmm. They absolutely want change. They want us to look at things differently, and they want us to protect them. That That's what I gathered. Of course, I had to keep running after <laughs> Councilman Mendez won on a, uh, you know, on August 1st. <laughs> right. I, could, I had to throw that in there. Sure, I'm sorry. sure. Well, you're there now. You're both there now. All right, so obviously this uh, new mayor will be in position before the next meeting, you know, and the budget was what? I mean, there's a lot of stuff that the city needs to deal with right now. But would you say the budget and certainly, you know, the incoming mayor, that was a, a huge part to the budget and how we're going to get out of it and what we're going to do. And he differed a lot from Mayor Briley. Uh, he, he did, um, and you know, the budget is going to be a big deal. You yeah. know, we've got, uh, it's been in the media, the comptroller of the state of Tennessee has got a letter out to us demanding that we institute a cash management policy and wanting more information about how we run things. And I really think that's going to dominate the first uh, 60, 90 days of the new term. The, the debt is what? Uh, was it 41 million? The, the in the whole wall, and in no, the whole, we wished yeah. it was 41 million. How yeah. much is it? I mean, how much is it? Well, it depends well, on which number you're really looking yeah, at. What I mean, you, sorry. It's, a, it's, in the, it's in the billions. Bill, I mean, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, bi what do you mean? All right, the billion. All right, yeah. so what was so that? We well, the, 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 the budget is... Um, I'm sorry, yeah. The, there's... there's the budget that got approved by the council, Mayor Briley's budget, right. had forty-one That's million right. dollars worth of revenue um, from selling off assets. Okay, that, that is not there. That it seems very likely that at least thirty million of it will never happen. Mm -hmm. there, there's never been council support for it. I don't think there's council support now. And Mayor Cooper has said he's not going to pursue the sale. This is of the parking. Yeah, the parking. They, yeah, Cooper said he wouldn't do that. And so that thirty million worth of revenue isn't going to happen. And the comptroller of the state of Tennessee and everybody else should be interested to know, okay, where do you cover that $30 million okay, from? I guess that's what I meant. Now, in terms of, if you would just give it perspective, why is it, and you know, for the general public maybe following this, and you know, a lot of this is details you guys are up to speed with, maybe they're not. Why does the state pay attention to this? Why is it important, <laughs> do you think, that we not be billions in debt? I mean, shall I answer yeah. this? Just give that to folks. Well, I think it's important so, to lay that so out. He, here, here is why I believe the state is interested in it is because we're operating outside of our own charter rules hmm. and the state constitution. We do not have a balanced budget. Okay. Um, we could have dealt that, and if I may, congratulations, uh, Councilman Mendez, Chair Mendez. He's going to be chairing budget and finance, and so he's got a very large job going forward. I hope I'm on that committee with him in order to, uh, you know, take this challenge because it. And I think we would both agree. Uh, it is going to be a challenge. It's going to be it's going to be difficult. We're going to have to make hard decisions. Um, and the one thing I said throughout the entire process is, while he and I may differ on ideas, thoughts, how we have, how we fix things, uh, I don't ever remember the time that we didn't have a respect for one another. Mm -hmm. And you know, and I'm grateful for that because it is going to be tough. I mean, we have a deficit 
that we didn't deal with. We needed to deal with it, but we didn't. You can't keep kicking the, the mm -hmm. can down the road because, unfortunately, there's a sign there's, that, that says dead end. Mm -hmm. and, and that's where we are right now. We've got to stop, and we've got to deal with the money, and we've got to fix it in my opinion. Yeah, uh, I mean, the state of Tennessee um, uh, controls all the finances of all the municipalities in the city, and if you get too, out, too far outside the guardrails, the state comes and tells you to get back into the middle of the road mm -hmm. and, and follow the rules on finances. And, and you know, we're, we're building budgets. I mean, this is stuff that a lot of us in the council have been saying for a few years. We're building budgets on selling one-time assets. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing as balancing your yeah. family budget by selling your boat, selling your stereo, selling your dog, you know, no, if it's not long term. It, yeah. it doesn't it doesn't work in the long run. Okay, and it's not to this point, but if nothing were to be done and the problems were to continue to escalate, the state has the power to come in and take control of your finances, doesn't it? Sure, absolutely. Now, they're not close to that point, no. and they're, they've given you the notice on that along those lines. All right, so when it comes to this, um, and you, know, you just mentioned the parking, and that's not going to happen, but I mean, you have one of two things you can do, or both probably. Okay, you're either going to cut, you have to find new res revenue streams. That's basically, that's always the way it is. Right. Cut a re Before we get to those solutions and how you view that, what do you think got us into this pickle in the first place, and I know it's it wasn't it wasn't sudden. It's built up, as you said, over time. Kept kicking the can down. <laughs> where do you place the blame? Well, and this is a place where uh, Councilman Glover and I do disagree a little bit. Um, and I'll I'll jump in and try to go first here. Um, we are deeply out of step with historical practices on setting a property tax rate, um, and like strongly out of place. And and we're we've got the lowest tax rate in the state of Tennessee. We've We've got the lowest tax rate in the history of Metro, and and the numbers would tell you that um, we're choking ourselves off from revenue. The only person, the only people not making money off the spoon mm -hmm. is the city of Nashville. Yeah. There is another component. The other component is that um, uh, investing in downtown has not been transparent over the last 10, 15 mm -hmm. years, and um, that causes uh, distrust about things. And mm -hmm. so they're, they're both parts play a role in it. And un unfortunately, I, I think for the downtown part, it took us 10 or 15 years to get into this level of not being transparent. And mm -hmm. it's going to be hard to snap fingers and, and make it go away in a couple yeah. of months. He and I do disagree. I mean, we've got more revenue than we've ever had right. in our history. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think we've managed it properly. Uh, and this is where, and again, this is where we have the respect for one another. You know, raising taxes is not the alternative, in my mind, until we sit down and analyze every penny we spend and if we have to raise taxes we need to go and sell it to the public and when i say sell it they need to make sure they understand exactly how we're going to use it now state law also dictates uh how we do that and, mm -hmm. and how it works just like the school board we give them x number of dollars and then they go do what they want to do because the the state is very clear on what our role is and how we function with regards to the money I don't think until we finish uh, cutting what I what I'll call the the uh, excess spending, uh, and until we actually grab every aspect of every penny we can save, I don't think raising taxes is the right way to do it. And and, and that's right. That's okay. where we, we we disagree. And just two quick points about yeah, that. Yeah. Um, one is the the city is over the last several years cut. 30, 35 million dollars worth of expenses. So there's no getting rid of extra paper clips and, mm -hmm. and trimming uh, fat around so the There's not edges. a ton of fat in your no. opinion. Okay. And the other thing that's important to understand is for where the mood of the city is, of all the incumbents that voted for a property tax increase, mm -hmm. everybody won except for one. Mm -hmm. um, and of the incumbents that lost, four incumbents lost, three of them voted against a tax increase. So um, I, I know I respect Councilman Glover's position, but across the board, the council, people who were in favor of the tax increase won, people who were against the tax increase lost, and that's where the mood of the majority of the county is. To, If it takes, obviously people want to cut the fat, obviously yeah. people don't want to get overcharged for downtown, but at the end of the day, kids uh, are going to school in trailers and we can't get uh, firefighters and police officers mm -hmm. paid what they need to get paid, and that's not something where we've got time to study the heck out of it. We, if we need to fix it, we need to fix it. 
This is going to be a good conversation. This is excellent. I'm <laughs> well, learning so much. You guys are great. Fun. Listen, we'll take a break. When we come back, now we do have the phones up here if you want to join in the conversation. 737-7587. Or sit back like me and listen. We've got some other things we're going to touch on, obviously, as we make our way through this, including what some of the options are moving forward and what they think they'll be able to do with our new mayor. So we'll take a break. When we come back, more of our conversation with the two at-large members in the council, as well as taking some of your calls.